In this week's episode, I'll show you how I made these cyborg glasses. I 3D printed the parts, put together the electronics, and I'll show you all the steps on today's Film of Friday. This episode of Film of Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. I started with these futuristic sunglasses I found on Thingiverse by user Jay Sergato. I printed it on my Creality CR10 large 3D printer at a 0.3 layer height, and the finish surface is just fantastic for 0.3. So now I want to put LEDs across this front right here, and I noticed the spacing of these holes is almost perfect for these square LEDs that I have. These are super bright LEDs, 4-pin version, and they push right into the holes. So that worked out great. So then I had to choose a microcontroller, and I had this little Arduino Mini, but it was actually too big. So I decided to use my own little board with a PIC microcontroller, and then I could cut the top of the board off here so it'll fit right here at the nose bridge. And the connections are perfect for connecting to the wires. And then I'll use a CR2032 3-volt battery, and I'm going to add this switch. Just solder this on so I'll have an on-off switch on the side of this. So this is coming together beautifully. I got all these pieces ready to go. So now it was time to put in the LEDs. So I got the first two in place and then I realized the holes are slightly angled so you can see straight through. So in order to get the LEDs in I had to use a tiny drill to drill out the holes. But that allowed me to put the rest of the LEDs in and once I had the last one pushed in place, now I could solder to the back of these and you can see the leads are popping through it not a lot but just enough that I can get wires on them so the first thing I did was solder a bridge across all the ground all the negative side of the LED so I just had a bus going all the way across this and this just took a little delicate soldering not a big deal and then the next step was to add a wire to each positive side or anode of the LEDs so each one got its own wire and then I used the battery to test them to make sure that my solder connections were working and that was perfect. So now I was ready to move on to the next step and that was soldering the switch to the battery holder. And what I did is just clipped off one of the leads and then soldered it in place. So the solder will actually hold the switch in place and then later on I'll show you how I use some double sided tape to hold it. So this looks like this was working good. Then I got out my 3D printed wire holder and that was perfect for holding the positive wire to the positive side of the battery. So I soldered that. Now this assembly was done. The code is really easy and I used PicBasic which is the same stuff I used in my book Programming Picks and Basic. But the main guts of it is just this very simple main loop where I multiply by 2 to shift it to the left or divide by two to shift it to the right. That's really it with a hundred millisecond pause. So very, very simple program. And then I tested it on a breadboard and here it is with LEDs scrolling back and forth. So that worked good. So I pulled the chip out of the socket, soldered it to the board. And once I did this, I really couldn't program it again easily. Um, now I still have the programming pin at the top, the, the row at the top of the board, but I'm gonna cut that off so it'll fit on the bridge of the glasses and that's what I did and I just used double sided tape to hold the micro and then I did the same thing with the battery holder on the side and then I put a battery in just to test it and when I did that I noticed that switch still kinda loose so I slid in some double sided tape now later on you'll see that I have two batteries in this guy because I, I didn't realize the chip that I used would only run on 5 volts so I had to add a second battery so then I soldered a wire from the switch to the negative bus bar and that was just, you know, added a little solder to the switch and then brought the wire up, soldered those two together. And now I had the ground lead and then I brought the positive lead from the battery to the positive point of the board. And then I individually wired each LED to its proper pin. And then I soldered a wire from ground to the bus bar. So that completed the circuit. And then I flipped on the switch and the LEDs were working just as expected but man were they bright the camera can't even pick it up so I knew I needed a diffuser so I hopped over to Tinkercad and designed this this is my diffuser it goes right on the front of the glasses I got the dimensions off the glasses so it's pretty close should fit pretty good and then from this I downloaded it and printed it on my maker front with some HTPLA experimental plastic it's semi-transparent that I got from protopasta so this is at a 0.2 layer height. It did a good job on the maker front bridging and I was ready to install it 
to the glasses. I messed up the dimension of the depth so the LEDs actually pushed on this and left a little gap. So I decided to just use a glue gun because then I could fill in a gap. So I put a little bit on each end and then once I had that set I tested it to make sure that it's going to diffuse and it did. It was perfect. And so from there I just added a glue to the top and the bottom just to seal in the cracks and to hold this thing in place. And this worked pretty good. It was a little bit ugly how it you know, ended up. It's not as smooth but again I was running out of time. But here it is all done and flashing. It just it came out nice. Even Bender got involved. He's smiling. He liked it. So that's it for this week. This was a lot of fun. If you want to see these in person, I'll have them at the Bay Area Maker Fair at the Matter Hackers booth. So stop by and check them out. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of these videos that are popping up over here. Just click on them and take you right to it. If you want to help support the channel a dollar a month to the Patreon logo, it goes a long way. And if nothing else, click on that logo over here that says Chip. That helps support the channel by you subscribing. So that's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.